is a quick review of our ranges. He's going to put on a stick here. This is Largo Mountain, where our target is our hand, right? He's aiming for my cord, he misses, but I can try and get him on the hand. So that's long range, Largo Mountain. Pulls it out, it's medium, medium, medium range. We're putting the core, we're putting uh, the, the ribs, the, the head. Then this is Corto, close range, where Puno is able to hit the head. But me personally, I add in the clinch range. So that's what we're going to be working with today. Some, some clinch range stuff off the stick. Sometimes when we're here and we're doing sparring stuff, right, and he's swinging, I want to get in close enough that I don't eat a lot, right? So let's say he's swinging in here. Bang, I'm in here. So what do I do? i got to get into a clinch. However I get into a clinch. So we're going to start off with Puno. Uh, puño, puño based Puno, right? So he's coming to Puno me in the head. I'm going to block, hook, down, block, hook, down. Which is a perfect example of if he's going to be swinging bang, 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 and they've got the time to enter in, he's swinging one and two. Whoa, crash in, and I can get in here. So what we're going to be doing is off the Kuba, right off the bat, dropping. We're going to come down here, drop it to here, rest our stick right on the shoulder. Right to here. So, coming in, one, two, three, here. The other hand just comes up and pulling it in. This is, in my opinion, the first clinch base that we do. It's going to be interesting. Just like when we're doing a clinch, we're hooking in here like that. Our elbows are pushing into the collarbone, and this is pulling on the back of the head. That's on single arm or double arm, right, for control. When we're doing this, it's coming in, pull, 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 bang. Same deal, right? This is in the collarbone. We start off, this is just pulling in. The next step will be putting that on the collarbone as well, and then we get a compression. First off, over here, bang, right there. We can be doing knees, but as we bring this in, just like our tie style clinch, we go like this, try to bring it in. We have this, and we put that against the collarbone. That, that leads us into that compression. It's just crashing in and getting a hold, bang, I've got a hold. And right now, we've got that single clinch. It's against the collarbone. So the next step that we're going to be doing is we bring this part into the collarbone as well. Just like a tie clinch where both are pushing into the collarbone. So that we're just a little more secure. This is for controlling and moving. Could be for knees or whatever the case may be. The third point is bringing these things parallel with me so I get a, a compression that works like a nutcracker. Turn sideways for me. So we're here and now what I would be doing is applying pressure that way or even better that way and it creates a, a nasty pain response. Yeah. Um, there's takedowns that you can do where you just drag it straight down and create pressure against the ground. Um, be careful with your partner because I don't want to get injured. So again, from here, um, position one, position two, position three. And you're perpendicular to the guy as opposed to facing him to here. And then you've got that triangle. You've got that triangle we're working, and you, you do that to crank the neck. All right? So variations on ways to get in there. I had a very good question here about how to actually get in there. You can come here, crank it, right? And then we grab it. The one I like is just right in there. Here, one, two, in, down. All right? That, that one's really smooth. One, two, dropping, grabbing. That's an option too. One, two, drop, and we're right in there. And go also get into that neck crank. One, two, drop, grab. Even if he's pushing off, that other hand gets in there, and I already have the compression by the time he starts applying pressure. It's uh, the only real one that you can do is you can grab the bottom of my stick and open it up, right? And then you get into whatever else, right? <laughs> pushed it from close quarters to medium quarters, okay? So, here, one, two, grab, compress. By the time he starts realizing how to fight, ideally you've already done what you need to do. It's not that job. Let's see he's a bad guy swinging on big number one. I'm in here and go here, okay? From here, same idea as the inside of the clinch, where I, I came in this way, right? But I'm coming to the outside line, bang. Behind, right? So we're here. I 
push on the tricep right to there, okay? Notice I'm getting behind him instead of in front of him for the clinch. Right? This arm goes over here, back, all right? This is our rear naked choke. Um, and technically right now, the way we're doing it and we're pulling and pushing, um, I've got kind of figure four at the side of his head here. It's a neck crank as much as anything else. It's not really a, an air choke as much as a crank, but either way, you can, you can take down and do some controls from this point. So that's, that's A. We go in with the rear naked. Boom, boom. Bang, rear naked. You can also, simpler version, just grab onto it. Pull it in tight to yourself. Level drop. You just drop down one foot and you've got that. Or if he's really intuitive and he knows that you're going to try and get a choke and he tucks his chin, you get the cross face, which is always nice. Drop it then. All right, so where it goes. So Colby was just illustrating that uh, that weight dropping principle of dropping like a half foot or a six inches or a half or a foot from behind is enough just to take somebody down simple enough. So he's getting behind. Choke, get down. Sorry, all right? With enthusiasm. You go for it. Oh, it's my turn. So we're here, boom, we get to this position. Six inches down, you can continue to hold it and get the choke, right? Yeah. Or you can just drop them and continue with your figure eights or whatever. This one here is a variation on our, our uh, tricep lifting huba coming underneath. If I had a knife or a earth grip knife to come in, I lift in here and I come in here. As an empty hand technique, I get in here, I can do takedowns, chokes, all kinds of stuff from there. But now with a stick, Actually, getting in there is a little easier. It's kind of like one, two, up like that, like almost on our number three angle. You come in, up to there. So instead of bringing our knife and getting into a tight triangle choke, we're just getting our stick here. Number one is just pulling it down, like that half foot principle, dropping them down. Number two would be coming around into this, holding the back of the head and getting that, uh, it's almost like a rear naked. Again, you pull it down and into yourself, the pressure is on there until down. Tap down, okay? And again, you just follow him, right? You don't just lean over it, right? There we go. There we go. Oh, you can go for it. All right, so let's say he's swinging in on a number one. This is our outside roof, we come in there. Um, otherwise, we can come in and crash, get it off line, come in there, right? But if we're trying to do takedown stuff, we need to get from that medium range in close. So we're in here, right? Um, this is our overhook, and I guess our step through takedown, right? Um, there's a few ways of getting there, but you need to be on the inside line. Um, generally, the roof to snake overhook is there. You can come in with your puño, you can come in with your clinch stuff, let go of it and get that clinch, or you can just come straight in, step through into the takedown, right? This is basically where you want to land. My hips have landed a little high up. I want to be rib to rib, taking the, the, the weight out of him, um, kind of like our grappling class there. There's no weight on my butt, it's all on the legs. Um, basically, I'm planking, and his core is the only thing holding mine up. Seeing I've landed here, um, just some of the dog brother stuff, they do a snake choke in there, but I'm not going to bite their stuff. I'm going to show you the, the cross face compression. So we're here, immediately press against, there's a few targets, obviously forehead, eye ridge, nose. Bring it on in real close here. Because I landed like this, we've got the forehead ridge, which doesn't really tickle, the eye ridge, which is very nasty, the chin, or if you can get it under the chin, into the, the neck. None of these are particularly nice. In a way, uh, how we're applying it, we're knocking the wind out of him a little bit by keeping our butt off the ground, but we start pressing like we're gonna be doing a bench press, a reverse bench press against his face. Obviously, that's uncomfortable. And he's in a kind of a compromised situation in, there's a lot of pain there. You'll be knocking out teeth, you, you'll be cutting the skin, there'll, there'll be a lot of screaming and nastiness, all right? We're coming in, however we get here. We overhook the arm, because we want that strong. We've got our hip. There's a number of ways of taking it down. You can keep running through. Run, 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 and he falls. But me personally, I come in with the hip. 
land here. I'm landing on my forearm, securing the tricep across here, and pu do push-ups. Do push-ups on the stick, yes? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, Adam had a very good point that if, if you're doing this wrong, um, it's easy to roll. I know when I do it with Colby, I roll over him all the time. He's coming in, hang, hang. If I fall down too high, he's going to roll me right over top. He gets in a dominant position. All of a sudden, the game changes, right? We have to play a different game. So the idea of landing with your legs a little further down, however, we're here, and not rolling on top, keeping your legs up high, or even like this, where this knee is up there, he can't hook to, to roll it over top. Plus his concentration is going to be distracted by other stuff. All right? Okay, so one option here, if I'm on the bottom, and you have to be careful for is getting it under the chin, being able to do this kind of stuff, right? So you don't want to get that, if at all possible, tuck your chin in there, and immediately start applying it there, crushing it against the ear, the ear is valid, but if you're doing that up and down, that reinforces it. I might be able to do that. I might be able to just take it away and slip it. So keep it as a fist and drive it as a, like you're doing a push-up across my head. So. so if I can get this up in here, I change my grip. From here, that's loosening, right? That'll pull out. But if I can get it here and create the levers, that's that, right? If you want to be a dick, one of my favorite techniques, you get it where the little ridge is right in the side of the neck, and you get that. You can also drive it into the trap, right? These are variations on the fang choke. Now, the, the original way I saw the fang choke de demo is right across like that. Not my favorite, I like the ridge, okay? You get a lot more pain compliant. Now I find I land with my elbow more than not, right? I'm here, where that pushing up makes a bit more sense, as opposed to trying to negotiate this stuff, which is there, but this, Seems to be an immediate thing. Colby's a strong guy. If he really wants to get out of this, he probably could, but he's being a nice <laughs> partner. <laughs> All right, just for a quick review, these are a few of the entrances that we can get to get into that clinch range, right? If he's swinging big, ones and twos, bang, bang. You know, when am I going to do it? I've got to time it properly to crash in into Hubud, right? Into whatever I'm going to be coming into. Um, or maybe I've got to wait for him to go by, hit the tricep and come into here, right? All of those are options. So he's here, the sweep out, with the takedowns. Um, anything that's going to get our puño from us striking to behind his head is basically our clinch, clinch application. We're in here into a hubud, into the lifting, right? So all of these are entrances to get into clinch range because this is puño where we can hit, right? and this is our puño distance hubud but we might want to get one step closer to actual clinch range and get into here, right? So that's, that's one option of doing it. One, two, slap down, immediately come in. One, two, slap down into this. One, two, lift up into this. One, two, lift up into this. There's also into this. Backward spamming into that, or rooping into that. So those are a few of our entrances to get from core toe range into clinching.